live. I focus mainly on uh, videos from my telescope, streaming deep space objects, uh, tracking satellites, and tracking rocket launches. So I film a lot of rocket launches uh, with Red's Rhetoric. I've been developing my own software, both for tracking satellites like the space station and also for tracking rocket launches, uh, and have been using that to film videos of both. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, I've received a number of strikes in the last few days, starting with a video that was just me programming my rocket tracking software. I, I do that uh, during live streams, and then I usually open source the, the programs that I create. Uh, so that video got struck, and then I had a second strike on the latest Falcon Heavy launch, and now I've had a third strike on the first Falcon Heavy launch from a year ago. So now that's three strikes on my channel uh, in the span of the last couple of weeks. And so because of that, my channel is basically on life support. I'm not able to live stream, and I'm not able to upload videos. And if those strikes aren't resolved, then my channel will be deleted. So, uh, yeah, we'll go into that in more detail here in a bit, but that's just a quick rundown of what's happened and, and what my channel is all about. Sure. And uh, Ritz, how are you doing, yep. sir? Uh, the ugly plumber from Florida? The absolutely hideous plumber from Florida. <laughs> All right, get 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 it right. Get it right. We are we yeah. spoke about this at length in private. So, I'm such uh, a failure. <laughs> but you're my failure. All right. Yeah. Exactly. He's so a lot anyway, of failures. Usually his parents say that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Wait, so, uh, yeah. mine, dude, my gates. <laughs> so so yeah. Um, a, a, along with uh, you know, astronomy live filming rocket launches. Uh. Uh, he uh, he also uh, mentioned that he films with with uh, me on a lot of these rocket launches. Uh, the last Falcon Heavy launch that uh, was uploaded to his channel, I was also there to film, and that was the video where I managed to surpass one million views, and it was one of the best launches I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. It was amazing. So I was there to see Astronomy Live film this launch with his own telescope, with his own equipment. No one else helped him, all right? And the only other uh, piece of footage that was used in his video was my static cam uh, shot from the uh, Nikon P900. Here's the thing. I say this over and over and over again. Astronomy Live is allowed to use whatever rocket launch footage that I have. He's, you know, we kind of, uh, you know, support each other when it comes to the amount of footage. If his tracking software fucks up, I can fill in the gaps. If I fuck up on my tracking, he can fill in those gaps and so on and so forth. So we, we're kind of a team when it comes to documenting these rocket launches. That is the only other piece of footage that was in the, uh, in the Falcon Heavy video that was uh, DMCA to absolute fucking oblivion. So in response to this, what I did was I went on Twitter and I brought attention to this issue and i said attention everyone please retweet this at youtube so that we can get this issue resolved well now that even more dmcas have uh you know been i guess casted upon astronomy live i thought it would be really prudent to get on non sequitur so that we can get this out to as many people as possible so that we can quite literally bombard the ever living shit out of team YouTube and just YouTube in general to get their shit together and get astronomy lives channel back into full working order. It's Mm -hmm. fucking bullshit. How someone who never, never had any input in the making of that video and the filming of that video and the editing of that video can claim it as their own and strike someone's channel down into oblivion. That's fucking bullshit. So that's why I got in contact with Kyle, so that we can get this ball rolling in the right fucking direction. Because, I, again, this is not my uh, channel, but I'm pissed off because, you know, this guy, he's he, he's my way more intelligent, but not quite as charming friend. I mean, just just, just look at him. Just look at him. He's, well, what, was, how, how can you hate this guy? How can you hate this guy? And that's true. And here's the thing, like, um, like it's not like it's one, you know, it's a, a a bullshit. By the way, I don't know if you noticed Astronomy Live, but I'm wearing a constellation tie just for, in honor of you, sir. Oh, thanks. I couldn't um, see with the with the resolution here, but yeah, it's uh, it's okay. I don't, I don't know if, even know if you can really tell that. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Uh, your channel is is very educational based. It's um, it's not a bullshit channel. Like you don't deal with um 
you know, things that would sort of ruffle people's feathers, you know, you wouldn't think like, cause you're a very, um, you're a very straightforward sort of, um, uh, creator. And so I guess the, the best way to sort of approach this is just take us from the first one that hit you and, um, the, the steps you took to sort of figure out who this was coming from, if they're all coming from the same person, um, and, and, you know, what can be done about that? Sure. So the first strike came in was against a video stream that I did showing myself going through the process of actually creating some of the rocket tracking software that I use. So that's a long story that goes back over a year now, actually, uh, with the very first version of it. But I've been creating a new version of it based in Python and with a much better user interface. The idea being that I can distribute this so other people can use it as well for their, their telescopes. It uses off the shelf telescope hardware to be able to track these rocket launches. So I did a live stream literally showing myself typing out the program and received a copyright strike. Let's see, I got that on, what are we now? We're in May. That came in April 30th, uh, judging by the expiration date. So each of these strikes are good. If you don't do anything to them, they're good for three months. They affect your channel for three months. The video stays down permanently if you don't do anything, but the consequences for your channel in terms of your privileges, that's for three months. So it expires pending, if nothing else happened, it would expire July 30th. So that was the first strike. Um, and it came from somebody who goes by the name Jason Katera, uh, J-A-Y-S-O-N-C-A-T-T-E-R-A. Uh, and Fuck so you, it came from this, <laughs> sorry, I just had to get it came out. from this, came from this Jason Katera guy and all three strikes came from him. Uh, it, the only other thing it shows me is the email address it came from, which was a proton mail address, which as far as I could tell, anyone could create that. I mean, that's as good as a hot mail address. It's worthless. And apparently that's all you need, I guess. I don't know. That's all the information they're giving me on who this person is. And it doesn't seem to link to anything. It, you can look up the name and the email anywhere and like, there's nothing there. Um, so I don't know what's going on there, but, um, so that was the first strike. The second strike was to my latest Falcon Heavy video, which, as Red said, I used some of his footage, his static camera footage, where we got both of the boosters coming down and landing. It's a beautiful shot. Um, and so I credit Red for that in the video, and Red obviously gave me permission, and the strike obviously didn't come from Red, so it's got nothing to do with that. The rest of the footage was entirely mine. It came from my telescope, from the tracking software that I wrote, and from the telescope itself, uh, and that was entirely my footage. So. There was no music there. There was no reason for any strike to come from an outside source. And once again, it was manually detected, came from Jason Katera. That one came in, uh, that came in May 6th. So about a week later. Uh, and then the latest one just came in this morning. Uh, I guess it was this, was it this morning or yesterday morning? I don't know. It's, it's been kind of crazy, but it, it expires August 11th. So, and uh, I filed a counter notification for all three. The, the first one so the process that you go through is dictated by Digital Millennium Copyright Act and DMCA law. Um, and YouTube basically follows this process. The, the process is pretty much laid out by the law. However, every platform that goes through this process will have their own little way of implementing it because some of it is a little bit vague in the law as to how they deal with it. Things like they have to punish repeat offenders, people who continually upload a copyrighted footage. If you keep uploading movies and TV shows and, and getting strikes, obviously there needs to be a provision in there that you aren't allowed to do that anymore, that you're banned from the platform, which makes sense. And so there's a provision in the law that says you have to you know, do something about repeat offenders. But it doesn't necessarily lay it down. And YouTube will do that because they get basic, basically they get legal immunity for doing that. Um, they are protected as a platform. No matter what is uploaded, people can upload a whole movie to the YouTube and they have, and YouTube is immune as long as they follow the stipulations of the law. As soon as they receive the content ID strike, or not the content ID strike, sorry, got my wires crossed there, the copyright strike, as soon as they receive the DMCA takedown notice, they take down the content and say, okay, we took it down as you requested, we're immune. Um, the person who uploaded it then has the option of either letting that stand or filing a counterclaim saying, no, 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 I'm going to assume all legal liability. I assert that it was my right to upload that footage. It was fair use or it was my footage or whatever. And I'm taking all legal responsibility. 
YouTube says, okay, we're going to forward that information to the person who made the claim originally, and we're going to wait two weeks or thereabouts, about 10 to 14 days, and gives them time, it gives the person who made the claim time to then file a lawsuit seeking an injunction to keep you from infringing on their rights. They have to go to court. They have to say, okay, we're going to sue this person now. We have their information. You're required to give the, your information when you do a counterclaim. Oh, and so this leads to another fun problem of doxing. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, and so, uh, fine, we're going to forge your information. If we don't hear back about a lawsuit in the next two weeks, we'll restore your content and erase the strike. So that's the, the process I'm working through now. Uh, I received, with that final copyright strike, an email uh, that uh, I sent you guys a, a JPEG of, if you can put that up so we can see that. Sure. Um, so I'll read it. I'll read it out here. It says, hi, Astronomy Live. Due to a copyright takedown notice that we received, we had to take down your video from YouTube. Video title, uninterrupted footage of the Falcon Heavy launch and booster landing, 2618. So this was the first Falcon Heavy launch in February of last year. And then it has the video URL and the link and takedown issued by Jason Katera. This means that your video can no longer be played on YouTube. You have received a copyright strike. You now have three copyright strikes. As a result, your account is scheduled to be disabled in seven days. So this is the way it works with YouTube. Once you have three strikes, you're out. Now, it used to be, my understanding is it used to be, once you had three strikes, you were basically out almost right away. They, they almost immediately would take down your channel, and they wouldn't wait for the process to play out. Now, it's interesting that in the text of this email, if they follow what they've said here, I might, have, I might be okay for now only in the sense that my entire channel might not get erased. Because here's what it says. It says, your channel will remain live for the next seven days to allow you to seek a resolution and keep your channel up. If you believe you're not at fault in one or more of the instances above, you can appeal by submitting a counter notification. Now, I would already done that for the first two strikes. I've already submitted counter notifications for the first two strikes that came in. Um, it says, your account will not be terminated while your counter notification has been processing. I assume... That applies to the first two strikes as well, not just the latest, latest strike. Keep in mind that there may be severe legal consequences for submitting a counter notification with false information. And then it says you can contact the party that removed your video and ask them to retract their takedown. Mm, yeah, I don't think that's going to necessarily work in this case. So during this time, you will not be able to upload new videos and strikes on your account will not expire. So in other words, if you had a your first strike was about to expire the day after this one came in, it wouldn't expire now. They would just, you know, keep all three strikes on until they were dealt with, either with a counter notification or by taking down your channel after seven days. So I've filed counter notifications now for all three strikes. The third one, the counter notification hasn't been accepted yet. And this is also something I haven't noticed before. I've had issues before with, with completely false copyright strikes. Usually what it ends up being, at least in the past for me, it's been, uh, I did a video debunking someone's claim, you know, UFO video or whatever, and I, I took it apart and said, okay, here's here's proof that it was faked or or it's false. And, of course, they, they don't like that, so they submit a copyright strike. Even though it was direct commentary and criticism and therefore fair use, they, they still try to get it, you know, silenced and taken down. So that, at least it makes some logical sense there that, yeah, I was using their footage, but I was using their footage in a way that's fair. So I've been through this process before, and here's what I haven't noticed before is, when submitting a uh, counter notification, it now says on my page, if I look at the, the copyright takedown page for that video, it says counter notification awaiting review. And on the first copyright strike I received, YouTube actually rejected my initial counter notification, which to me was ridiculous because I didn't just write this myself. I, I go through a process uh, with the help of a lawyer named Rob Reed, who operates a website called Counter DMCA. And if you go there, you can pay like $1.30, and he will act as your agent for service of process. Um, he's not going to uh, – you're not retaining him for the purposes of going to trial. You are retaining him basically – I don't know if that's even the right term. I'm sure lawyers have some other term for it, but he is, he is your agent for service of process. In other words, if they want to sue you, they send the lawsuit to him, and he forwards it to you. That's that's the only function he's really serving. But it's nice because it masks your your address. It masks your phone number and your address and your private information. Because normally, if you file a counter notification, you have to supply your name, your address, your phone number, everything. So obviously, this is ripe for abuse because if someone wants to dox you, all they have to do is file a completely fraudulent DMCA takedown notice, and they got your information at that point. 
uh, in order to fight it, you would normally have to give up your ass.